economic development initiative have proceeded throughout the state in an unbalanced manner. For example, areas plagued by unemployment have received greater support. Northern Virginia, on the other hand, having a stronger economy, is plagued by transportation gridlock. What would you do to adjust the flow of state resources to your constituents? Well, the first thing I would do is lock up that tug sign, as I said early on. That is one of the very first things I would do. I would look at all options out there that would get transportation moving, because I can tell you that if we don't get transportation moving and get out of the gridlock, we will lose the high quality jobs that we have worked for so long in Prince William County. We're blessed in North Virginia and yet we're cursed at the same time. We're blessed that we have worked 20 years to attract quality jobs, but VDOT is 20 years behind in the transportation. So I would look at every option, I would review every dollar that we hand out there in transportation to see where the funds are and prioritize projects and get us moving. And um, we do, we do very well with economic development in North Virginia, but that's because we we have the jobs here. But what we need to do is be able to keep these jobs and get us out of the gridlock that we're in. Go ahead, Robert. Thank you. Well, obviously, I think we need to adjust. The, uh, we need to adjust the funding, the transportation funding formula. Uh, that is uh, and probably at the top of the list. North Virginia is not getting back anywhere near its fair share of what we send down. I spent my remark for running a $2.2 billion surplus. That was generated here. That $2.2 billion surplus was generated in Northern Virginia, and we're not going to even get half of it back. If we're lucky, we'll get half of it back, and probably less than 40%. We need to change the funding formula. We need to make sure that the areas, the regions that need the money, that we get the money. You know, we're the economic engine of the state. If they keep giving us the short end of the stick like we do, like we continue to get, then we're not going to be the economic engine anymore. We have beautiful four-lane roads in Southside Virginia that nobody's on. And there, believe it or not, there are Northern Virginia legislators that believe that that's okay. And I have to say that they're not in my party or in my body, but the, but the fact is that there are people in our delegation who believe that we need beautiful four-lane roads in, in, in Southside Virginia. So that's, that's the top of the list. Um, we need to... Um, make sure that we change the way that we do things. The, the, the yesterday's answers to problems, yesterday's answers to yesterday's solutions are not going to be the same answers to today's solutions and tomorrow's challenges. We need to make sure that we move with the time that we think outside the box and that we do the things that we need to do to stay competitive. And in Virginia, we're running on a 1971 base budget and we haven't had budget reform in over 30 years. If you all ran your households on a 1971 base budget, if you ran your small businesses on a 1971 base budget, you wouldn't have money for anything. So economic development, I think, everything comes into economic development. Whether it's uh, better schools, or better roads, or whether it's making sure that, uh, as I met somebody at the door the other day, that uh, the president of the Prince William Soccer League, who's very frustrated that he doesn't have room for all the kids who want to play soccer. We need to make sure that we get all that under control. And as I discussed earlier, growth is a major factor in that. If we don't get it under control, it's going to swallow everything. It already is, and it's going to get even worse. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks.